The battle between the US and North Korea over human rights looks set to intensify as the first American special envoy for North Korean human rights since 2017 has raised some major concerns in Seoul this week, renewing accusations against Pyongyang while condemning the recent forced repatriation of North Koreans in China and highlighting the North's history of abductions. This is bound to set the US on a collision course with Pyongyang, which has often been upset by American accusations related to North Korea's human rights record, as well as claiming via state media in the past that the US is a living hell as elementary rights to existence are ruthlessly violated and frequently citing racism in American society. But speaking during her confirmation hearing in the US earlier this year, Turner herself insisted North Korea's situation is one of the most protracted human rights crises in the world. She said, as it's deteriorated, the connection between its widespread violations and abuses and the threat it poses to international security are clear. Then, at the start of August, a statement carried by North Korean state media stressed that Turner's absurd remarks are nothing but grumbles of either a person ignorant of even the concept of human rights or a human rights abuser embodying the inveterate bad habit of the US, which revels in meddling in the internal affairs of a sovereign state and slandering it. The statement also claimed that the appointment of such a wicked woman showed Washington's hostility towards Pyongyang. Against that backdrop, Turner was officially sworn in Friday before heading to Seoul for a three-day trip to meet government officials, civic organizations and North Korean defectors. On Monday, she met with South Korean Foreign Minister Park Jin and called for international cooperation to expose terrible abuses in the North. Park also expressed Seoul's deep concerns and efforts to enhance solidarity with the international community to improve North Korean human rights. But Turner faces obstacles too, including from China. She said Wednesday during a media roundtable in Seoul that last week's forced repatriation of some 600 North Koreans in China further highlights the need for like-minded countries to discuss durable solutions for those seeking to leave the North. While Seoul and Washington have apparently raised the issue with Beijing, it may not change China's stance going forward. As well as mentioning separated families, Turner said the issue of abductees is one of the best examples of human rights violations committed by the North Korean regime, having been shown a list of 516 people abducted by Pyongyang since the Korean War, with at least 21 of them believed to be living right now in the North. Turner vowed to strongly raise the issue at the United Nations next week. But then again, there's China. For instance, in mid-August, Beijing opposed a planned UN Security Council meeting on North Korea's human rights on the basis that could intensify confrontation and antagonism, according to a spokesperson for China's UN mission in New York. So even though nearly a decade's passed since a landmark UN report stated that North Korean officials, potentially including leader Kim Jong-un, should face justice for state-led atrocities, global divisions, especially between the US and China, not to mention Russia, make such a move more challenging than ever.